Cool, so if we're lucky, uh, some of this will clear up tonight and we'll be able to do some astronomy with these two boys here. So for those of you who don't follow the Voice of Thunder channel, um, some time ago I, I had this sort of scepticism about, you know, expensive red wines versus cheap red wines, and there's this big debate that I had with my friends that, you know, did it really make that much difference? Could, if I got, say, six bottles of wine, ranging from a few dollars to, uh, you know, $30 per bottle or something, uh, how much does it change with a blind taste test? And this is... Um, and the answer, by the way, is very little. Um, very little for people who aren't professional wine tasters. So the question comes, is the same thing, thing sort of true of telescopes? If you have a telescope that costs ten times more, is it really ten times better? So what you've got here are two refractors. That's, that's guys who have, have lenses at the front there um, and this is a uh, it's a hundred and two millimeter that's four inches at the front there that's the lens this thing is a 90 it's three and a half inches uh, this thing is f5 it's a relatively short focal length this one's a little more it's about f7 that sort of thing this thing is dead light uh, weighs about a couple of kilos this thing is almost twice as heavy and as you might expect, this one is the the cheap one. This cost about two hundred dollars, and this one there was about one and a half thousand. So the question comes: is is it really that much better? Right. So uh, refractors uh, have this problem. Yeah. You know, the, the the main reason this one is more expensive is it's an apochromat. You know, it's a triplet. There are three lenses in the in in this one, which means that all of the light focuses down here to give beautiful images. With this one, uh, with the bright objects, the, the the red light and the blue light focuses in different areas. The practical upshot is is, yeah, get this purple halo around bright objects. But that doesn't really matter if you're looking at faint objects, and yeah, you know, because this is. A short focal length it, it not really you know it's more of a wide angle thing so if I'm just using these as essentially camera lenses you know it, 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 is there really that much difference between these two the, uh, the cheap telescope I'm gonna focus it first oops and for the focus we're gonna have to zoom right in on the bit that we think is interesting, which is the Orion Nebula. Let's just center them up. There we go. And now to focus. Oh, one more time. It's about there somewhere. Excellent. After that, it's just a matter of pushing the single button on the timer. And stand still for. You can see if I just jiggle around. On, oh wow, there's quite a lot of uh, movement on the focus there. Yeah, it's just from the, uh, the atmospheric shimmer. But we'll go for that. So I'm not going to stay still for 30 seconds. So I've got a deep sky filter in this boy at the moment, um, which basically just reduces some of the orange sky glow. So I jiggled it a bit down there. We'll see how it goes. Right, okay. So that. Let me take a look at what we got. And I just want to zoom in on one of the stars. Oh, and that's pretty decent. Good. Okay, he's tracking nicely. He's burnt out completely, of course, but uh, there's just way too much stray light here. Um, <laughs> there's... Not a lot you can do about that. In fact, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to reduce the exposure there to, oh, what you reckon? 20 seconds. No, 15. 15 seconds. Then we'll try again. Okay, so we're all set up again. And here we go. We've got four. We're going for 15 seconds now. So. Nice and still for 15 seconds. 
and we'll see what we can see. I just about see the Orion up there. The naked out well with the camera. There you go, 15 seconds, good. Let's see what that looks like. And it's so the reason it's all blur, of course. Actually, that's still pretty. Oh, that looks gorgeous on the screen. Okay, we'll we'll stick with that, assuming it's tracking well enough and it's tracking beautifully. Okay, excellent. So there are some blue halos around the stars. Let's see how that compares to the uh, to the telescope that costs almost ten times as much. Okay, so now I've got the the fancy telescope out, which you should just about be able to see in the red glow of the light. Um, and in the middle there, we have again the trapezium, which will just make sure it's focused. Should be said the build quality in these things is absolutely no contest, but eh, what you expect, it costs 10 times as much. So the, the micro fine focuser. Maybe this my eyeballing it actually. Hmm. Oh wow. So it's going over a chimney or something, it's shimmering like a son of a bitch. Okay, well, that looks okay. Good. Right, so now all we need is nice and relaxed and we'll see what we get some 15 seconds later. With all this horrendous light pollution. Boom. So let's see what that got us. Okay. Yeah, so we don't have the blue halos on the stars, but um, I'm not sure what that'll look like. Um, yeah, just in the direct comparison. We'll see. Okay, let's see what those look like side by side. It was a plane or something that went across there. Awesome. So let's take a look at the raw data and uh, see what we can learn from all of this. Now, you'll recall that I had two telescopes. There was a somewhat shorter focal length um, F5 cheap telescope and a more expensive, somewhat longer focal length telescope. So the longer focal length telescope looks at a smaller area of the sky. So the brighter image with a wider angle is the cheaper telescope, which, I mean, immediately you can see that they're very comparable images like this, you know. Now, you've got to bear in mind that this is mm, bottlenecked by the quality of the sky. If we had really dark skies, Eh, you would probably see more of a difference. And it should also be stressed that uh, the reason the sky is blue is because I had a deep sky filter in there and there's an awful lot of sky glow there. So um, the the deep sky filter basically filters out a load of the orange from the sky, but you know, there's still quite a lot of more other stray light coming in from somewhere. Now, I, I could make a little more effort try and get rid of some of that, but hey, this is just a 15-second raw comparison of... Uh, about an F7 apochromatic telescope at about $2,000 and a F5 uh, acromat at about $200. And they are immediately... Um, I mean, it, it, if, you're, uh, if you know what you're looking for, um, you can see which one is better color corrected even without sort of zooming in. So... The wider angle one, you can see that the stars uh, have more of a purple halo around them. And for certain, if you were to zoom right in on these images, uh, the, the the purple halo becomes much more mm, noticeable. But I mean, for me, on these wide angle shots, it's not greatly noticeable to the point where, you know, if you were under eh, not so great skies and you were just doing some... If you, if you were starting out, there's really not that much point in going for the apochromatic telescope, which costs 10 times as much. 
If, however, you were looking at bright objects, uh, particularly the planets, then there would be a huge difference between these two, and I'll, I'll, I'll try that sometime. But if you were looking at planets, planets are small, and if you're looking at small objects, you don't want a short focal length refractor. You want something that's much longer focal length. Um, so, yeah, looked at like this, um, I was surprised at how little difference there was between these two telescopes. Cool. So what are these telescopes and where might you be able to buy them? Well, the good news is I can't really give you any affiliate links to any of these things. Uh, so, you know, you can make up your own mind. Um, the uh, Stellavu, the, the expensive one, is over 10 years old and they don't actually make them anymore. But, yeah, it, all of the apochromatic triplet type uh, refractors, uh, they look like they're going to have very similar performance. They're superbly made. The engineering is fantastic. But the one that people will probably be more interested in is the cheap one, which was a Skywatcher. It's a Skywatcher 102 millimeter refractor. It's very short focal length, 500 millimeters, F5. This one I got bundled with, it looks like they're actually quite difficult to buy just the telescope on its own. You know, I think this is because they're an entry level telescope. Eh, they they always seem to sell it with a mount. So you can get it on a sort of Altars type mount, or I got it on a, a cheap, very portable um, go-to mount uh, for um, it's about $500, that sort of thing. I want to stress that whilst for this test, it really did really did perform very similarly to the more expensive telescopes. Once you get this thing onto planets or the moon, I've certainly had this cheaper telescope looking at the moon, and you get a significant purple halo around bright objects like this. Now, there are sort of shortcuts, things you can do to get around that. You know, you put in yellow filters that cut out some of the purple light and all that sort of thing. Um, but uh, whilst, for, whilst for this test, it was... It was very comparable uh, for other things. It won't be. I mean, in any event, a, a refractor with this short focal length won't be so good for planet in any event. Uh, and so this is one of the things. Um, whilst I did the review of, what was it called? The EV scope. I, I, there's another telescope very similar to it called the Stellina. And the Stellina uses a quality of telescope somewhere between these two. And the thought occurred to me that I'd never actually directly done this comparison between the performance of essentially what is the cheapest telescope and the most expensive telescope. Now, admittedly, it's a it's an under a rather it's a niche comparison, uh, but I still find it actually quite interesting just how little difference there was between these two. So I did actually have a choice of which mount I should use to drive all of this. In the event, I was just lazy because I it, it, the, the heavier duty mount shakes less and has less trouble and all that sort of thing. And that, in this case, was a Celestron Evolution mount, Altaz type thing. Um, I will, at some point, get around to testing the GTI uh, lightweight uh, head that the, uh, the cheap refractor came with. Uh, I, I've done some tinkering with it before. It looks like it's a perfectly serviceable mount. I'll leave the links to the Amazon affiliate store below. and uh, Not directly relevant for uh, really anything in this video. But if you're interested in that sort of thing, you might want to take a look through there. Anyway, if you enjoyed the video, uh, give it a thumbs up. Many thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.